Welcome to CSC Guru. In this session, we will discuss the second parameter passing technique that is called by reference. Already in the previous session, we have discussed the called by value technique. Okay. In called by value technique, the copy of the actual parameter variables will be sent to the formal parameter. So, in called by value, we are sending only the values of actual parameter to the formal parameter, that to a copy. Okay. In called by reference, if you are considering, address of variable is passed from calling function to the called function. For example, if you are considering the main function, in main function only, we will implement a function call. That is, a calling function will be placed in a main function. Okay. So, here add of a comma b and here the add function if you are considering this is int a comma int b. Okay. So, this is the function header of function definition. So, this is nothing but calling function and this is nothing but the called function. Okay. These concepts already we know. So, here address of variable is passed from calling function to called function. So, here add of a comma b. a is nothing but a variable and b is nothing but the variable. So, for example, if you are considering the variable a and a holds value 10 in the sense and variable b holds value 20 in the sense and this will be stored in some memory location 500, 502 likewise. Okay. So, here the value 10 will be stored in the memory location 500, okay, with the variable name A. And the value 20 is stored in the memory location 502 with the variable name B. In called by value, we have referred directly the variable. So, the value is directly sent to the formal parameter, okay. And here in called by reference, what we are going to do in the sense, address of variable is passed from calling function to called function. So, to send the address, we have to use ampersand symbol along with the variables. That is ampersand A comma ampersand B. So, this ampersand represents the address of A and address of B. Okay. So, what is the address of A? That is 500. Address of B is 502. Instead of holding the value 10 and 20, here it holds 500 and 502. Okay. And this address is sent to this formal parameter A and the address of B will be sent to this formal parameter B. And here in formal parameter, what it has to do? It should not refer directly the address. It has to refer in that address what is the value stored. We have to refer the address. Okay. Similarly, in B, in this address, what is the value stored? It has to refer its address. So, to refer its address, we have to use pointer variable here. The formal parameter should be declared as a pointer variable. That is star we have to use here. Okay. Two difference we are making here. One is the actual parameter should send the address. So, here we have to use along with the variable the address operator. That is ampersand symbol. Okay. So, here the actual parameter instead of sending the values, it will send the address. The formal parameter to refer the address. Okay. Don't do anything with the address. Just it will refer the address. And in that address, what is the value stored? It will take it. Okay. So, here to refer its address, we have to use a pointer variable. So, that the formal parameter should be declared as a pointer variable. That is int star a, int star b. Likewise, we have to declare. So, here address of variable is passed from calling function to the called function. That is address of actual parameters. That is address of a and address of b is sent to formal parameters. And here, need to declare formal parameters as pointer variables with the same data type. What is the data type of A? With the same data type only, we have to declare here also. Okay. So, A and B should be of same data type in actual parameter as well as in formal parameter. And here, the formal parameter should be declared as a pointer variable with the same data type of actual parameter. Okay. This is must. 
and a formal parameter and actual parameter points to the same address. So, here if you are considering in the sense, this is the actual parameter values and this is the memory location of actual parameter. 500 and 502 is the address of actual parameters. When the actual parameter is sending the address to formal parameter, the formal parameter will also hold the same address, same memory location that is 500 and 502 only. The formal parameter just it will refer the address. In that address, what is the value stored? That it will take it. Okay. So, here both actual parameter and formal parameter points to the same address that is same memory location. It is sharing the memory location. So, changes made in formal parameters will reflect in actual parameter. What is the changes we are doing in formal parameter and what is the manipulation we are doing that will reflect in actual parameter also since both shares the same memory location. Thus, the way of changing the actual parameter indirectly using the address of actual parameter is called called by reference. Why we are saying it here it as a reference in the sense it is referring its address not the value. Whatever the manipulations or calculations we will do, we will do with its address only. But indirectly, if you are considering in that address, what is the value stored? Indirectly, it will take the value only by referring its address. This technique is called call by reference. And if you are considering here, this call by reference is a theoretical technique only. Most of the programming languages does not use this call by reference practically. Only it is implemented in Java. So, now we will discuss the call by reference with one example. And this is a program to add two numbers. And here this is the function declaration. In function declaration also, we have to refer the variables as pointer variables since we are using address here. Okay. And this is nothing but the calling function. And calling function only will hold the actual parameter. Okay. And this is actual parameter. And this is nothing but the called function. And here, this is nothing but the formal parameter. Okay. So, here if you are considering the address of A and address of B. So, here A in the sense A value is 10 and B value is 20 in the sense. And this is stored in memory location 500 and this is stored in memory location 502. Okay. So, here the actual parameter will send the address of A and address of B. That is, here it will send 500. Here it will send 500 and this it will send hold value 502. And this value will be sent to formal parameter X and B value will be sent, A value will be sent to formal parameter X and B value will be sent to formal parameter Y. And here, this is must, the formal parameter should be declared as a pointer variables. Then only it will refer its address. Otherwise, it will consider that memory as a value. 500 and 502, it will consider it as a value. If you are using the pointer variable only, it will consider that as an address. And in that address, what is the value stored? It will take it. Here, in address 500, if you are considering, the value stored here is 10. So, it will refer 10 here. Similarly, if you are considering the address 502, the value stored here is 20 here. So, it will consider 20 here. So, star x, it will consider the value 10 and star y, it will consider the value 20. But here, the actual parameter sends only the address. Okay, 500 and 502 only, it will send it. But here, the formal parameter will refer its address and it will take the value stored in that address. That is 10 and 20. So, when you are adding sum is equal to star x plus star y. So, here star x means x value is 500 here. This 500 is not the value, it is the address. So, star 500, if you are referring in the sense, in that address 500, what is the value stored? That is 10. Similarly, star y. So, y is 502 here. Star 502 in the sense, in 502, what is the value? That is 20. 
So 10 plus 20, both will be added. You will get it 30. So the sum value was 30. And it will return 30 to the calling function as a result. And that will be printed in the output screen. So here if you are considering the formal parameter and actual parameter shares the same memory location, not different memory for formal parameter. So here memory is not wasted. So whatever the changes we are doing in formal parameter, definitely that will reflect in actual parameter since both the parameters shares the same memory location. So here like call by value, we cannot able to retain the original data that is the actual parameter value. So this is nothing but the concept of call by reference technique. Next, if we are considering the advantages of call by reference technique, it does not create duplicate data like a call by value. So here, since the actual parameter and formal parameter shares the same memory location, it will take the value in the same memory location only, not different memory location. So here, it is not necessary to create the duplicate data. And second thing, if you are considering efficient use of memory location, since both actual parameter and formal parameter shares the same memory location. These two are the main advantages of call by reference technique. If you are considering the disadvantages, this call by reference technique is not supported by multi-threaded programming environment. Since manipulation, if you are doing in formal parameter, sure that will reflect in the actual parameter. So if any changes or manipulation done in one thread, that will affect the other thread. That is a multi-programming environment, it will affect it. So sure, we cannot able to retain the original data. So it is not supported in multi-threaded programming. It is only supported in Java programming language, not in other programming languages. And this technique is mainly a theoretical concept only. Practical implementation is very, very less. Okay. So, these are all the advantages and disadvantages of call by reference technique. Thank you for watching this video. 